I hope you are all doing well this morning. Uh, my name is Robbie Ridgway. For those of you that may not know me or may watch this later, uh, I'm the pastor of Amelia Baptist Church here in Beaumont, Texas. Um, and we are, uh, every day until Easter, are walking through with devotionals and Bible studies, um, looking at what it means for us to live in light of the resurrection that we look forward to celebrating on Easter Sunday. We celebrate every day, but we look forward to especially celebrating it uh, Easter Sunday. Um, so as y'all are joining, as you're coming here on the on Facebook or Instagram, make sure you share, make sure you uh, let people know we're here. Uh, you can, of course, do that live, or you can do it um, later on in the day. Uh, as the video will remain up there, you'll also be able to access these videos on our webpage, ameliabaptistchurch.org, uh, our YouTube page. Um, you search for Amelia Baptist Church, you should find us. Um, we are going to be looking today at Luke chapter 15, uh, verses 1 to 10. Uh, if you joined us last night for our Wednesday night prayer meeting, Bible study, and worship time, um, we talked about the cost of discipleship, and we looked at uh, really Jesus laying out, laying all his cards out there and telling us that uh, it's not easy to be one of his followers. It's not easy to be a disciple of Jesus. It's not easy to follow the standard of God's kingdom rather than this world. It's not easy uh, to live the life that he's called us to in light of his death and resurrection and salvation that he brings. Um, we did see at the end that though it does cost us, uh, it costs us our family and ourselves, it costs us uh, bearing our cross and the burdens that he, it, we, we might have, it costs us giving all our possessions to the glory of God's kingdom and his plan. Uh, but we did see that he empowers us to do everything that he's called us to, to be who he's called us to be. Uh, if you didn't get a chance to watch that, you can look back on any of those sources here on Facebook, on our webpage, or on our YouTube <clears throat> to see that. But uh, Jesus it immediately, Luke immediately presents in the next verses, uh, it's another chapter, but it's right after what we had last night, what we looked at last night. Jesus is going to give us uh, three parables uh, really showing us with, with the great measure, the great uh, passion and the great strength and effort that Jesus Christ puts out to come and to find us, to come and to save us. Yes, it costs, and Jesus wants us to understand that. It costs us to follow Jesus, but it, it's he's the one who's seeking and desiring us. He's the one coming out after us, trying to find us, trying to save us, showing us uh, how we can be saved by him, and then he's the one who rejoices when we do accept him and choose to follow him. So um, let's look at, at Luke 15. I'll give, in case you just tuned in, give you a chance to turn there. Luke 15, we're going to be reading verses 1 to 10. We're only going to be reading um, two of those parables that Jesus shares. The third one uh, we won't read, but you can read afterwards and uh, continue on this time. So in Luke 15, starting in verse 1, we read that all the tax collectors and sinners were approaching to listen to him. And the Pharisees and scribes were complaining, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. And so he told them this parable. What man among you has a, who has a hundred sheep and loses one of them does not leave the ninety-nine in the open field and go after the lost one until he finds it? When he has found it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders, and coming home, he calls his friends and neighbors together, saying to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found my lost sheep. I tell you, in the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous who don't need repentance. Or what woman who has ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp, Sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it. When she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, because I have found the silver coin I lost. I tell you, in the same way, there is joy in the presence of God's angels over one sinner who repents. Jesus 
is, is making clear to us, explicitly clear to us, that he wants each and every one of us. He wants each and every person. He has come to seek and to save the lost, to die and to pay for the sins of all those in the world. Now, of course, uh, he has paid for the paid the price, but until we accept the benefit, and still we accept the gift of salvation, we can't uh, live under it. We can't rejoice in it. We can't accept it. The woman looking for her coin, she might see the coin in the corner, but say, I'm not going to pick it up today. It doesn't do any good if her coin sits in the corner, if she knows where it is, unless she's picked it up. It doesn't do the shepherd any good if he can look across the the, the gulf and he can see, there is my lost sheep, but I won't go and get him. I'll just leave it there. Jesus has paid the price. Jesus has, 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 has made the way for salvation for everyone who would believe. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That's what Paul says in Romans 10, 13, quoting the prophet Joel. Jesus has done what we need, and he seeks out. Even today, he is seeking and searching and, 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 and working in the hearts and working in the minds and working through this pandemic and working through countless other situations to draw people to him, to actively go and look for one sheep when the many are already saved, actively working to find the lost coin that is out there. It's, it costs to be a disciple of Jesus. But what great joy to know that we have a Savior who would leave everything in order to come to us. And of course, that's what he did. That's what we celebrate in these coming weeks. We're going to celebrate Sunday that Jesus came to Jerusalem willingly, ready to die to pay the price for our sins. Ready ready and willing and knowing what awaited him in, in Jerusalem and at Golgotha. And then we're going to see... on. Uh, as Jesus raises from the dead and as Jesus rejoices on Easter Sunday the next week, uh, uh, the power that Jesus Christ has over sin and death and the power that he uses to save us and give us hope, to give us peace, to give us joy that passes all understanding, that's a mystery to the world and that nobody else can understand. We have a God who looks for us. That is is one of now you could say we're talking about what how we should live in light of the gospel how we should live in light of Jesus resurrection if we have a savior who would seek us like that should we not seek others should we not seek to share with others should we not seek to 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 help others to come to know and to find Jesus Christ and if heaven rejoices how much more should we rejoice how much more should we be excited for God's work in this world no matter what you may be experiencing now, whether you have anxiety, fear, boredom, uh, stir craziness, I don't know, cabin fever, there you go, whatever uh, you might be struggling with today, if maybe you're struggling with depression or loneliness, maybe during this time you're, you're falling back into old habits and old sins, uh, Jesus Christ is looking for you to help you, to call you home. Maybe uh, you've, you've left the church, you've left your faith, maybe you, you've um, uh, stepped away for, for a number of, of days, weeks, years, who knows. Today, Jesus Christ is calling you home. This time, this is the time, I'm not saying that God caused this pandemic for that reason, but he, he always works through every situation. He is working through this virus to call people to him and to bring people home. Will you come home to Jesus today? I pray that you would, if it's for the first time, to accept him as your Lord and Savior. If it's to come back and say, Father, please accept me back. I've stepped away. Or maybe just as a reminder, you haven't fallen away. You've been faithful, but maybe you're not feeling important and you need a reminder that you have a God. You have a Savior who left the 99 to come and find you. You have a God and you have a Savior who, who scoured his house looking for that one coin, who scoured the world and did everything that he could to find you, to bring you home, that you might be redeemed, that you might be a child of God, that you might live uh, in light of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I pray that you might consider that today. I pray that you would trust the Lord 
whether that you would come to the Lord, whether it's for the first time or to come back, that you would be encouraged that you have a God who loves you so much. Let's pray. Father, we come before you today, and I just thank you so much that we can join together in this way, that we can come before you uh, electronically, and we can be united in spirit, even if we can't be united in the body with each other. Father, I pray that you would continue to seek and save the lost, that you would look, leave the 99 to go and save the one, that you would scour the house to find the one coin that's lost, that you would, would continue to save and that we would be a part of your rejoicing at one lost sinner who comes home. Father, we pray that you would bring strength and, and endurance and protection to those who are serving in the midst of this virus in dangerous ways or in in compromising ways. Those who, doctors and nurses who are uh, facing, those who are infected and facing the possibility of infection, for those who have lost loved ones already, uh, that you would bring peace and comfort. For those who are struggling with the virus themselves, that you would work as the great physician and the great healer to to make them well. Father, I pray for, for all those in whatever industry, whatever way, that, are, that have to be at work, that have to uh, be in contact with others in order to give the rest of us what we need. Father, I pray that you would give wisdom and discernment to our leaders as they make the best decisions for us and that you would give us the, the, the wisdom and the courage and the boldness to listen and to obey and to do what we're told that we might see this uh, virus stop spreading and the, as they say, that the, the curve might be flattened. Father, I pray that you would bring an end to this virus, but that you would help us thrive throughout it, that we could be your people and be a light shining brighter than we have before for your glory. Father, we look forward to being together, but we embrace the burden of being separated for the glory of your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Look forward to seeing you all tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Check out Uh, Previous videos here on Facebook, on YouTube, and at our webpage, ameliabaptistchurch.org. Thank you. Love you. Have a blessed day.